Hi, I'm the Lockpicking Cuba. Back in video 37, I had a look at Kane's Jawbone, an amazing literary puzzle that has only been solved four times in nearly 90 years. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a literary puzzle that has never been solved by anyone in over 150 years. It wasn't intended as a puzzle, but it has become one simply due to the fact that its author, Charles Dickens, is no longer around to explain it to us. What we have is a letter and about nine other documents written by Dickens from the 1830s to the 1860s, using a shorthand known as brachigraphy. Unfortunately, Dickens made it harder for us by inventing his own symbols and abbreviations and, well, just by having such bad handwriting. We do also have some notes of Dickens's that explain some of his own symbols. We can see, for example, the particular squiggles he used to represent words like foundation, circumstances, even electric telegraph. Dickens himself famously described the shorthand notation that he used as a savage stenographic mystery. This was in the semi-autobiographical novel David Copperfield. Here's what he said. I have tamed that savage stenographic mystery. I make a respectable income by it. I am in high repute for my accomplishment in all pertaining to the art and am joined with eleven others in reporting the debates in Parliament for a morning newspaper. He explained in more detail how he went about learning the shorthand, which seems likely to be somewhat reflective of Dickens' own experiences. He said, I bought an approved scheme of the noble art and mystery of stenography, which cost me ten and sixpence, and plunged into a sea of perplexity that brought me in a few weeks to the confines of distraction. The changes that were rung upon dots, which in such a position meant such a thing, and in such another position something else entirely different, the wonderful vagaries that were played by circles, the unaccountable consequences that resulted from marks like flies' legs, the tremendous effects of a curve in the wrong place, not only troubled my waking hours, but reappeared before me in my sleep. When I had groped my way blindly through these difficulties and had mastered the alphabet, which was an Egyptian temple in itself, there then appeared a procession of new horrors called arbitrary characters, the most despotic characters I have ever known, who insisted, for instance, that a thing like the beginning of a cobweb meant expectation, and that a pen and ink skyrocket stood for disadvantageous. When I had fixed these wretches in my mind, I found that they had driven everything else out of it. Then, beginning again, I forgot them. While I was picking them up, I dropped the other fragments of the system. Every scratch in the scheme was a gnarled oak in the forest of difficulty, and I went on cutting them down one after another with such vigour that in three or four months I was in a condition to make an experiment on one of our crack speakers in the commons. Shall I ever forget how the crack speaker walked off from me before I began and left my imbecile pencil staggering about the paper as if it were in a fit? Dickens learned his version of shorthand from this book, Brachigraphy, or An Easy and Compendious System of Shorthand, by Thomas Gurney. Improved by Joseph Gurney and now practiced by William Brodie Gurney, shorthand writer to both Houses of Parliament. In Gurney's brachigraphy, each letter of the alphabet is represented by a symbol, but each of these symbols can also represent one or more words. You usually miss out the vowels entirely unless they're at the start of a word or they make up a whole word like A or I. So in this letter, these first three symbols seem to be an I and F and an L, which could mean I feel, but it could have another interpretation as well. As well as this letter, known as the Tavistock letter, Dickens wrote a number of other documents using his shorthand. These documents are now in archives and private collections all around the world, and most of them are undeciphered. Amongst them are a set of booklets owned by a neighbour of Dickens, Arthur Stone, who Dickens was teaching shorthand to. These booklets add up to about 70 pages and they contain dictation exercises which seem to be a collection of stories and other writings. One of them, a story called Sidney Smith, has been decoded, basically just because a longhand version of it also exists. The other stories are called The Two Brothers, Nelson, Travelling and Anecdote, and none of these have been decoded. So, in 2021, the Arts and Humanities Research Council has set up a competition with a prize of £300 for the person who makes the most progress with decoding the Tavistock letter by the end of 2021. So you don't have to decode the whole letter, but the person who has the best decoding and the best explanation of their decoding wins the prize. Uh, I'll put some details for how to enter the competition in the description below if you're interested. Charles Dickens is one of my favourite authors, and in my view, the way he played with language is a big part of his appeal. And when you combine that with a century and a half long mystery, well, if you ask me, this is a pretty fun competition. Sure, the £300 prize money is not large, but I'd imagine that whoever did decipher the Tavistock letter would gain a lot more in terms of kudos for their achievement than a £300 prize. So, what are you waiting for? Why not go for it? 
All right, well, thanks for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, hope to see you in the next video. Bye.